bells on Christmas Day. Their old familiar carols play. And mild and sweet the songs repeat. A peace on earth, goodwill to men. Good morning. Good morning, Pastor Joe. Welcome to Second Baptist Church, whether you're in person or watching us online. We're so glad to have you here with us this morning. It's starting to feel like Christmas, right? We got some snow, we have some Christmas songs, we got some wonderful Christmas decorations. Um, and also today, we'll be observing the Lord's Supper. And so you received a, a, a wafer and a, a cup when you came in. And if you're at home, uh, joining us, they might want to go grab those elements so that we can partake together um, uh, in the remembrance of Jesus and his um, death for us. So uh, pledge cards. Uh, right now we are trying to make our budget for next year. And, you know, this has been a very difficult year with, with COVID for all sorts of nonprofits. And uh, same with us. We are, we're in a deficit. And so if God has blessed you, please fill out that pledge card or, or, or just give um, if you have extra uh, so that we can make up that deficit this year. Um, but I say that, but I also want to say if you're struggling, 
If you're someone who's lost their job or, or needs resources, as a member of the church, we have a members in need fund. We have a COVID relief fund. So it's not just about giving. As a church, we also give to one another. We support one another. Those who have help those who don't have. And so if you have plenty, we sure could use it. But if you don't have anything, well, then we want to help you. Uh, but please fill out those pledge cards. Uh, if you're online, that you can do as well. Lots of things, different things going on. You can always go to our website to keep update, sbcsouthhadley.com. There's an event page with an interactive calendar. So again, lots of stuff are going, is going on. And so please see the website. And um, this year, we had a big collection for our Thanksgiving food drive. And although we're not doing a formal drive, I do want to remind you that um, we have that carriage in the back, right? That shopping cart. And um, that shopping cart, go, we bring that food to the food pantry. And so although we're not doing a formal drive, I know they're in such need that if you think of it, you have extra groceries that aren't expired, put it in that shopping, shopping cart because I know the, the food pantry really is, um, is overtaxed right now. And then finally, um, as you've heard, the COVID surge is, is happening. And so... Um, you know, we continue to follow all the Department of Public Health guidelines here with masks and distancing, but I also just want to emphasize, one of the reasons we have our online service is that if you don't feel uh, comfortable coming, uh, and you're a high risk group, then again, we have this service online so that you can um, stay safe. The important thing is we continue to support one another as we go through this difficult time, even this surge, so that we can still uh, sing and praise God despite the circumstances, have a deep inner peace, no matter what kind of craziness is going on in the world. Well, speaking of peace, um, we're going to light our Advent candle, and Matthew is going to come and light the, uh, the peace candle for us. Come on up, Matt. Thank you. Advent is a special time when we count down the days before Christmas to commemorate the expectant waiting of the advent of the Christ child. The advent wreath and candles are full of symbolism tied to the Christmas season. The wreath itself, which is made of various evergreens, signifies continuous life. The circle of the wreath, which has no beginning or end, symbolizes the eternity of God and everlasting life we find in Christ. The candles also have their own special significance. The four candles are lit on the four Sundays of Advent. They represent the hope, peace, joy, and love of the Advent season. The middle candle is the Christ candle and is lit on Christmas Eve to recognize that Christ's Advent brought the true hope, peace, joy, and love to our world. Last week, we lit the first Advent candle, the hope candle. Today, we light the second candle of Advent, the peace candle. As we light the peace candle, we remember that God promised to send a prince of peace to a world in desperate need of peace. Scripture reading from Matthew chapter 1, 18, verses 18 through 25. Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife. For that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. 
When, G when Joseph woke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife, but knew her not until she had given birth to a son, and he called his name Jesus. If you're able, would you please stand and join us as we... We praise our Savior this morning who came from manger to cross to empty tomb. we go to the Lord in prayer, I um, just want to encourage you to uh, pray in your hearts uh, with me, especially in this time of, um, of isolation and, and this pandemic. Um, we need to be praying for one another. So um, as we pray, um, Pastor J Joe and I and Christy and Sadie, we're more than happy to uh, pray with you. Um, but not only us, I think we also need to reach out to one another in prayer. Um, 
God calls us a priesthood, a royal priesthood. And this priesthood, as, as God's priest and Christ as, a, as, a, as the great high priest, the true high priest, we have direct, direct access to God through Christ, the true high priest. So we have the power of prayer through Christ to pray for one another. And this is a very important time, I think, that um, we are, we're not just praying on Sundays, but actually we're more importantly praying Monday through Saturday, uh, every day, because this is the weapon that God gives us as the body of Christ. So as I pray, I just encourage you um, to be praying in your hearts as well. So uh, let's go to the Lord uh, in prayer at this time. Oh, Lord, uh, we thank you for this time of Advent. Um, it is a season in which we prepare our hearts to welcome Christ, who is the bringer of all peace. We confess to you um, the ways in which we block the peace of Christ in our lives. Oh, God of peace, hear our prayers. As we enter into this Advent season, help us to be expectant people. Uh, bend our thoughts and aspirations towards you and towards people who we need to share the gospel story. Help us be a gospel-centered people that move and have our being in you, that we are mindful and intentional about being disciples of Christ, that share God's love to our families, our friends, and to the wider world. Oh, Lord, we know that we're in a spiritual battle every day, against the evil one and the powers of this dark world. We live in a world that is bent against you, who blaspheme your name, who pervert justice, who oppress the marginal, marginalized and privilege those in power. Lord, your word says the days are evil. However, we are reminded in your word that you have already won the ultimate battle against sin and death and that you are redeeming the days, the time, and you are renewing us in all your creation who are often caught up in that evil our, ourselves. So help us, O oh Lord, not be apathetic and indifferent to what is happening around us, dulling in our, spiritual spence, in our spiritual senses. But instead, let us be a people fervent in prayer, devoted to your word, reaching out to one another in prayer. Light a fire in our hearts for you and for the word and for the world. Lord, we pray for revival in the Pioneer Valley. Help us fit ourselves with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace, that we, we may go, we, that we go to the places where your name is not yet being glorified by people. Lord, you see the needs and hurts of many people during this Advent time. Be with those who are more in isolation, those who are feeling loneliness and despair. Be with those who are struggling with health issues. Lord, we pray for Fred. Um, help him at this time, Lord, and watch over him as he's battling some health issues. We pray for your healing and recovery uh, for those who are sick. We pray for those who are currently battling the coronavirus. And we pray for a safe and speedy vaccine to be available for all in need. We pray for the medical professionals, we pray over them and the doctors who are treating patients and finalizing the vaccine, give them wisdom. We pray over our teachers and students in education, help them navigate, learn, and teach in this remote learning time. And be with our families and parents as we plan our schedules. Help us put you at the center of our lives, of our schedules. Let our lives reflect you and orbit around you and not the other way around. Lord, let us remember as a church that this Advent season is not about shopping and buying gifts and presents. It's not about rushing and scurrying to get things done our, on our own agenda, but it's a time of prayer. It's about praying, reading deeply into your scriptures, expecting and anticipating what you are doing in our lives, being part of your redeeming work and sharing God's love and peace with others through the gospel of Jesus Christ. Lord, we pray for Pastor Joe. Would you speak through him as he shares the word of God that he may point us to your gospel, Lord, 
and give him wisdom as he leads the ministry. Lord, in this Advent time, let true worship begin in our hearts. Let our praises rise up to the heavens and let our celebration spread new hope over a tired world. And help us, O Lord, be your peacemakers on this earth. And now let us pray the way the Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. He made a way. 
Father, we thank you that you are here with us right now. We thank you for your presence. We thank you that you are Emmanuel, God with us wherever we go. And Lord, in this time, as we contemplate your birth, Lord, let it not be a time of sentimentality, but God, a time where we see that you are a purpose of God. That long before the manger, God, you knew and you planned to save us. And that from the manger, God, came the cross that paid for our sin. And then the empty tomb, Lord, that promises us new life. We thank you for that hope. And we thank you that hope lies in the manger. So, Lord, as we talk about the peace that comes at Christmas, the peace that came in the manger, Lord, we pray right now that your spirit of peace will reign here, will touch each heart gathered in person and online. Give us a peace, Lord, that allows us to focus on you right now. Help our hearts and minds be still to hear your voice. And we pray, Holy Spirit, that you will speak through Pastor Joe, empower him today to preach your word. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Over to you, Joe. Thank you. Well, we, I was not with you last week. I was on vacation, and I was, um, you know, speaking of peace, I was having a lot of peace, having like a piece of chocolate pie, a piece of apple pie, <laughs> a piece of pumpkin pie, because it was Thanksgiving. Um, and also, some of you asked, well, what did you do on your vacation? Well, with this COVID stuff, we can't do much, so, you know, I grew a beard. Like, that was <laughs> the, basically all I could do, because you can't go many places. Um, but yeah, Christmas is a we, we talk about peace a lot, but it's often not a very peaceful time, but a stressful time. <clears throat> a time of getting gifts. Um, if you have some uh, dynamics with your relatives and you're going to see them on Christmas, it can be stressful. Uh, the snow, fighting the snow uh, yesterday. And this year, forget about it, right? I mean, peace is so hard to come by. I don't think I've talked to one person where, you know what, 2020, I'm such filled with such an inner peace this year. I really haven't heard anyone <laughs> say that. Um, and th this pandemic, it's seriously stressing everybody out, and then we have the top of election stress, all sorts of things. 2020 has not really been a year of inner peace. And it's been difficult for everyone. It's been difficult for churches. Um, and, you know, I, I want to stop in just kind of pause and give some thanks. Uh, you know, during November, uh, Chrissy took some time and thanked different uh, people, different volunteer groups in our church. Well, as I was going through some Thanksgiving uh, time, uh, I wanted to thank uh, the church staff. Uh, because, you know, on top of the turmoil, the transition of 2019, right? We think, oh, 2020, we're going to get out. You know, we're going to start to really roll as a church staff. Boom, right? Pandemic. And we, we struggle with, you know, how do we, how do we lead a church when, you know, we're not supposed to gather, but a part of the church is gathering and growing. Well, well you can't do that. Or like we did before. Um, you know, that includes our volunteers. Half of our volunteers are, are staying home, as, as many should. It's off the table. Less financial resources. And yet, um, you know, I want to, you know, Chrissy, you've continued to lead us in worship. And I'm so grateful for that. Um, and you know, Sadie, she's engaging our online community so that everyone in our online community is greeted and, and, and talked about. And, and Sadie, you, she's had a doubly hard year this year, not only with the pandemic, but with the diagnosis of, of MS. And yet she's continuing to, again, engage and, and do so many things to carry our uh, church forward. So thank you. Uh, Sadie, let's give her a hand. And Peter, 
you've been thrown in the middle of this, right? He, he comes on stuff, but he, he knew that. And in addition to trying to just learn the normal things of the job, he's advancing our ministry. And that's a hard kind of thing to do. Wait, you just learn how we normally do things, but oh, please help us adjust to do all sorts of things differently. All right, and so Peter, thank you. Um, and you know, while I was sort of, again, during Thanksgiving, being thankful to God for, you know, this wonderful church staff that God has blessed me to work with, the Lord also reminded me, um, probably between my fifth and sixth piece of pie, um, <laughs> quite remember, but that, you know, true peace, like the foundation of peace can't be in my circumstances. So in other words, although I'm really happy and thankful that I get to work with some wonderful people, if that is the foundation of my peace, well, then that's going to be fleeting, right? Because um, in this world, like things change. True peace cannot be found in our circumstances, whether it's having great people to work with or, or having our health or having prosperity or success. Again, that kind of peace is fleeting because there's always going to be trouble in this world. Right? No matter what good comes our way, it's not a lasting good. On this side of heaven, there will always be pain, there will always be death, <laughs> there will always be difficulty and struggle. And yet, Jesus is the Prince of Peace. The uh, angels announced peace on earth, right? And that's what the, one of the songs we just sang was, yeah, well, the angels were singing, peace on earth. But again, at, at Christmas time, it, peace and Christmas often don't go together in our experience. And many people are not at peace at this moment. I'm not going to ask you to lift your hands, but I'll bet many of you are feeling, yeah, not really at peace at this moment. And peace and Christmas seem disconnected, not only in our personal experience, but knowing the circumstances of Jesus' birth, it's kind of odd that Jesus is the Prince of Peace. I mean, think about that. Matthew uh, read our scripture, and because the scripture was in Matthew, we had to make sure Matthew read it. Um, <laughs> so, why did Matthew read it? Well, because his name, his name is in it after that. But, but in that scripture... Jesus, he, he comes to a world that's in turmoil, and even in the relationship between Joseph and Mary, there's a whole lot of unpeaceful stuff going on, right, until Jesus brings peace, until God brings peace. But then, you know, even after that, Herod slaughters all the babies in Bethlehem. And so it's hard to understand, wait, how is Jesus the Prince of Peace when his birth and his life caused so much turmoil? Well, he is our peace. He reconciled us to God. So much so that Jesus is called Emmanuel, which means God with us. Emmanuel, actually with us, God in Aramaic. And if we have peace with God, then we have peace in our most important relationship in the universe. And if that's our foundation of our peace, then that peace can bleed into the other areas of our life. It's not that everything's all going to be go swimmingly, but we have a foundation of peace beyond our circumstances if we have God with us. And that's exactly the gift that God gave when he gave Jesus, the Prince of Peace. So let's define that term, peace, Right? Because for you hippies out there, you're you know, thinking of uh, tie-dye and peace. And no, 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 that's not what peace is defined in the Bible. Rather, in the Bible, that comes from the, the Hebrew word shalom. Right? You might have heard that word before. And, and the Hebrew shalom is not just an absence of war, but rather it's, it's a wholeness. It's a harmony of being in in yourself, so in, in health and, and in relationships and in faith. And in the biblical view, you can't have true shalom. You can't have true peace unless you're at peace with the center of the universe, right? With God. So no, the, the center of the universe is not you. It's not me. Oh, and by the way, it's also not Yankee Candle. I don't know if you've ever been to their flagship state, their store, but it's like the center of the universe is S-C-E-N-T-R. Now, I like a good pun, but that always drives me crazy. I'm like, they're not the center of the universe. I could, you know, turn over some glass candle tables and 
<laughs> Blasphemy! Um, yeah, I can't go back there anymore, uh, but, you know, <laughs> something needed to be done. Um, yeah, Yankee Candle's not the center of the universe. I'm not, you're not the center of the God is at the center of the universe. And so, but if we have peace with God, then um, we have a, a foundation that goes beyond our circumstances. Because God's peace is so deep and transcendent and life-changing that, again, you can be at peace even when there's turmoil around you. That's what that shalom means, is that, yes, you have ultimately peace with God, harmony with God, and therefore that means you have harmony and peace with other people. And that's also a part of your task. And when uh, you read the, uh, the Apostle Paul, a lot of his letters, he says, he greets the churches. He says, uh, grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. And he's saying, he's giving that shalom greeting, that peace be with you. But also he says grace. And so he's saying, you know, basically you get that peace through God's work, through Christ. So it's more than just a greeting. It's a prayer. It's an invitation to find our peace in God's work. Or think of on Easter Sunday when Jesus meets his amazed disciples. What does he say? He says, peace be with you. And yes, that's, that's a greeting. But it's so much more than a greeting because he's saying, peace be with you. I'm here. Because they were just in turmoil. Why were they in turmoil? Why are they not in, at peace? Well, because their Savior just died, and now the Romans are looking for them. So they're not at peace, but Jesus comes in with his presence. He gives them peace because ultimately our peace, our foundation of peace is because God is with us, because Jesus is with us. Jesus shows up, and he brings a peace through his presence because he reconciles us to God. He brings us close to God. Now, many in this room and online and in this world could sure use that kind of peace. I can use that peace. I think everyone can. But you know, Joseph needed that peace as well in our scripture meet, reading. right? In the midst of a tumultuous situation, he needed that peace of knowing that God was with him. And you know the story. Joseph is engaged to this faithful woman named Mary. He trusted her. He trusts her faith. And then she comes and tells him that she's pregnant. And he knows they haven't done anything. Just think about how you would feel. I'm sure Joseph thought, I can never, I'll never be at peace with this. But yet God shows up. And with God's presence, God brings his peace. And the scripture reading is not that long, so let me just read it again. Matthew chapter 1, verse 18, it says, Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Again, put yourself in Joseph's shoes and the inner turmoil that he must have been going through. Verse 19, And her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. What other choice does he have, right? This is, this is a lose-lose situation. Everything's awful. The circumstances are such that he is not at peace in himself. Of course not. Who would be? 20, But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear. You see, when we're not at peace, it's often because we're fearful. But he says, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. And again, even just that statement is so packed with theological freight. I mean, he's going to save people from their sins. So therefore, we have, sin with, we, have, we have peace with God because our sin separates us from God. The reason we're not at peace with God is because we have gone against him. We are his adversaries. But no, now this one is going to save people from their sins, bring peace with God. And then verse 22, all this 
took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel. And then Matthew translates it for us. He says, which means God with us. And when Joseph woke from his sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife, he um, took Mary as his wife, but knew her not until she had given birth to a son. And he called his name Jesus. So here we have, in the midst of, of a tumultuous time, where, again, I'm sure if you had asked Joseph, can you ever imagine you know, being at peace with the fact that you know, Mary's pregnant and it's not your child? He probably would have said, no, I can't ever imagine being at peace with that. And yet, God shows up and brings a peace that seems like it's impossible to have. Now, notice the situation didn't change. Mary's still pregnant. Um, people are still quietly gossiping about Mary and Joseph in the background. Situation didn't change. But Joseph's understanding of the situation changed. So what produced anxiety and fear and despair and the opposite of peace in him, now it produced peace. A peace knowing that, wait a minute, God is here. God is here with Mary. God is here with this baby. God is here with me. He's here with the world. Seeking to save us from our sins through this child. Now, there's a theme in Scripture that, you know, God is with us. He, and at Christmas, this is taken to a whole other level because God is here with us in the flesh of this child. Likewise, God can bring us peace in the midst of fearful and troubled circumstances as well. But he'll bring his peace through his presence. Now, when God shows up, sometimes the circumstances do change. Often they do. So we pray that God would show up but when we have a sickness or whatever. And, and God sometimes will change the circumstances and bring healing or a, a job if you're praying. for that's one of the reasons we pray is we know that, God, if you intervene and show up, yeah, things change. Circumstances change. But sometimes circumstances stay the same. But with God's presence... He brings a peace. And that's what happened with Joseph. Because the angel referred to this Christ as Emmanuel, God with us. And if God is with us, and if he is our foundation of peace, then if we have God with us, we have that peace. And we can be sure we have that peace with God because, again, he is with us. The famous psalm, Psalm 23 it's one of the, uh, uh, again, most beloved psalms. It's probably, of all the psalms, it's one that people probably have memorized the most. I often use it at, at the funerals. It says, you know, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. Why? Because thou art with me, right? It's not, oh, I, I fear no evil because, you know, I'm just a bad man. No, I, I will fear no evil because you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. And it all is based on the fact that the Lord is our shepherd. Again, that comparison is that we're, we're like sheep, and as sheep, we don't have any you know, speed, smarts, or strength. But we do have the shepherd. We have the shepherd, and if the shepherd is with us, even though we have to walk through difficult circumstances, of the valley of the shadow of death, we don't have a fear because the shepherd is with us. We have a peace that transcends the circumstances. And the presence of the shepherd will give us that peace. Joseph experienced this. Joseph experienced this as, as he walked through this difficult situation. And it's because Jesus is proof that God is with us. He is Emmanuel. And if God is with us, we have a peace beyond our earthly circumstances. And Jesus also said, you know, the good shepherd, he said, I'm the good shepherd, and the good shepherd will lay down his life for his sheep. Meaning that if there's any wolves, if there's any violence, the shepherd takes it on so that the, the sheep can be at peace. And that's what Jesus 
does for us. That's what it means when God is with us. The shepherd is not just a concept. The shepherd is enfleshed and with us. And so that truth reassures us. It reassures us in a violent world, a, a world full of wolves that seek to tear us up. And, and knowing the Lord is our shepherd, it gives us that confidence in the valley of the shadow of death. And, and shortly before Jesus, um, shortly after, excuse me, Jesus' birth, I mean, Joseph and Mary, Mary had to walk through a, a literal life and death situation. I'm not going to read it, but in Matthew chapter 2, verse 12 through 16, you remember what happened? The wise men, they weren't all that wise in that they went to Herod and said, hey, we're looking for this newborn king. Herod says, wait a minute, I'm the king. And so he doesn't like that. And, and Herod plans to kill all of the, of the babies in Bethlehem. That's the opposite of peace. That's violence. And Joseph and Mary have to literally run for their lives to Egypt to escape this violence. And so if they were looking for peace in their circumstances, they would not find it there. I mean, how can you find peace when you're running for your life? I don't know if you've ever had to experience that. I, I hope you haven't. But that's not an experience that brings peace. So if they're thinking, all right, I'll finally be at peace if you know, all my circumstances line up, the whole rest of their lives they wouldn't have experienced peace because the peace was not in their circumstances. The peace was in a person, Jesus Christ. The baby that they were carrying, that's where the peace is. That's the prince of peace, not that their circumstances would all line up. And so, too, if, if you're lying awake at night, racked with worry, having health struggles, or, or battling with this world where there's not a peace, we have to return to the truth of Christmas, Emmanuel, that God is with us. God is with us. So how do we, how do we find that peace in this world? Well, first... You know, we, we need to understand that we need to stop looking in the wrong places for the foundation of our inner peace. You know, what is the foundation of your inner peace? It, it can't be in yourself. I, you know, that's often the mantra of, uh, of things today. Oh, look deep in yourself. Hey, I've looked there. Right? It's, not a, it's not a pretty place. It's not, it's not a peaceful place. We can't look for inner peace in our circumstances. So we need to stop looking there. Otherwise, it's going to be a fleeting peace. And, you know, I've heard so much in this, you know, this pandemic. You know, people are, oh, I'm, I'm not going to, I can't feel at peace until whatever. You know, we, we don't have to wear masks anymore. Or I won't feel at peace until, you know, church thinking, well, we have bigger church attendance, whatever, in person, or, or more younger people, or all, all the circumstances lined up. But listen, friends, even if we get everything we need that we think we need to be at peace, how long are those circumstances going to last? <laughs> They're going to be fleeting. You, we wait our whole life for things to all line up just as we hope. And what, maybe it lasts a year? Right? I mean, think about the, how in your life when things that, that have all, they've all lined up perfect, it hasn't lasted long. But that is what happens if our foundation of our peace is in worldly circumstances. It's fleeting. No, we need to be at peace with God by accepting his grace gift of himself. Because when God says, yes, I want to give you my peace, so what does he give? He gives himself. He gives Emmanuel. Because that's where our peace is found. And so maybe today, that's what you need to do. Maybe you're still searching for peace. And you're like, yeah, I'm not at peace with myself, with the circumstances. Well, you're not supposed to be. Because you know what? We weren't made for this world as it is. We were made for Eden. And in Eden, what was there? It was the God's presence. He would walk in the cool of the day with Adam and Eve. And yes, they were at peace because they had God's presence. So if you're not feeling a peace in this world of sin and rebellion against God, well, you shouldn't be. Because we weren't made for a world like this. We were made for God's presence. 
And that's God's gift. You know, what heaven's about, I mean, yes, there's going to be a lot of joyful things there, but really heaven is about God's presence, that we will experience God's presence in a full and unfettered way because that's what we're made for. We're made to fellowship with God. So don't be surprised that there's not much peace on this world because, again, it's not so, the, we weren't made for this world. So let's stop trying to find peace in our circumstances, in ourselves, and instead make that commitment to receive God's gift of himself. And so maybe some of you need to do that today. Maybe whether you're here or online, you've been wrestling. Just receive God's peace. Receive his presence. It's, it, that's what Christmas is about, his gift. But also realize this inner peace, it's a process. Making Jesus your inner peace uh, your, your foundational inner peace, it's a process. That yes, we accept that God has given us himself and that ultimately we're right with God because of Christ, but then living that out in the midst of a tumultuous world, well, that's a process. Because we need to keep reminding ourselves of our foundation of peace. When the world keeps you know, hitting us here and hitting us there and violence all around, it is a process. You know, we have a, our cat we got from a shelter her name's Dakota, and she just celebrated her 17th birthday, right? She's an old cat. But you know, the first couple years that we had her, man, she was not, <laughs> no inner peace there, no chill, right? She would either try to fight things or run away from things, right? Because she was basically taped up in a box and thrown on the side of the road. So of course, when you've experienced that kind of, uh, of trauma, and violence to yourself, then the fact that, well, no, no, you're safe now, like you're in our house, our presence will protect you. It took her years to finally figure out, no, I, I can be at pre peace. My, my owners aren't gonna tape me up in a box like my other owner or whoever did. See, it's a process, so too. We have been born into a violent and unpeaceful world. And so even after we receive Jesus, and he is our foundation of our peace, sometimes we need to, I shouldn't say sometimes, every day, all the time, we need to run back into his room, right? Into the, the holy throne room of God to remind ourselves that, no, I, we've got God's presence. I'm safe here. I don't need fight or flight. I can rest and be safe in God, even when there's crazy stuff going on around us. And then finally, that gift of peace. Yes, it's for you. It's yes, so that you'll have an inner foundational peace, but you're, it's meant to be shared. Jesus is called the Prince of Peace, and we're called to be his ambassadors. You know what that means? An ambassador is someone who is, yeah, this is, I'm from this country. This is my king or president. And so I'm, I'm coming on his behalf and so on the, the, the Prince of Peace, on his behalf, I'm going into the world and sharing his peace. But his peace goes with his presence. And that's the thing, is that when God gave us himself, he gave Jesus in the flesh, he then gave us his Holy Spirit so that God would dwell with us in a continually intimate way. We have that foundation of peace through God's presence with us, and then we bring it wherever we go. So, as ambassadors of peace, whenever we go to into a situation, because God has forgiven us, we're at peace with God, we intentionally are at peace with other people. Meaning that if someone needs your forgiveness, you give it to them because God's given you his forgiveness. You see, we spread peace. Peace. When you forgive someone, you're no longer um, in conflict. You're at peace with that person. And so that's a part of being ambassadors of peace his peace. But it also means that when, when we go, we sometimes spread peace by bringing God's peace, by bringing God's presence with you through fearful circumstances, through unpeaceful circumstances. Because God meant us to be his ambassadors so that when there's a, a violent situation or a situation that needs forgiveness, we go in and, and, and offer that because we've received it but it means going into a situation that might be unpeaceful. 
Again, because we know that our foundation of peace isn't the absence of violence or removing all bad circumstances. It's no, God is with me. So maybe God wants to bring his peace, his presence into this situation through me, through you, through us stepping into that fearful situation. That's what he told Joseph in verse 20, right? He said, Joseph, son of David, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife. In other words, yeah, you're going to step into this situation and it's going to cause probably more violence and, and trouble than ever you've ever had in your whole life. But you can have a peace because I'm with you. So take my presence that, that, that I'm giving through this Christ child and step into that situation. And so Joseph had to do that and he brought peace into that situation. And so maybe that's you today. Maybe you're faced with some difficult circumstances and some trouble. I mean, we all kind of are right now with pandemic and whatnot. I say, God, what, what do you want? How can I bring you into this situation? Now, again, all of that depends on you first receiving Christ as your peace. You can't bring something into a situation if you don't have it. Right, so don't be surprised if, if you haven't accepted Christ and you go into a situation and it gets, it gets worse or it troubles you because even with Christ, we have that battle. So first and foremost, have you accepted Emmanuel? Have you accepted that God is with you through Christ? If not, do that today. That is why God has you here today or listening today or watching this video some other time because God wants you to actually open that gift of peace through Christ. But then, maybe there's someone you're not at peace with. God has forgiven you. He's given you himself, his peace, so that you can then spread that. And God's bringing that person to mind if that's the case for you here. Or maybe you just need to step and say, Lord, you are my shepherd. Perhaps you are walking through the valley of the shadow of death, Maybe literally with a health issue or financially or you're going through a very difficult circumstance. Walk in shalom. Walk in the peace with God. It's not found anywhere else. But simply, maybe that means reciting Psalm 23. Right? As you go through this difficulty, Maybe that's what God's calling you to do is say, now just remind yourself that though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you don't need to fear any evil, any trouble, for I am with you. My rod and my, my staff, they'll comfort you. Say that to yourself. Take God up on that promise and then bring God with you. Right? Bring his peace with you. Let's pray. Dear God, you know our hearts. You know every one of us, whether we're here in person or online. And you know our trouble. You know our worries. Lord, you know that we're, we're people who need your peace. So Spirit, would you move in this place? Would you move to, to every listener? And first, God, if there is anyone who needs to receive you for the, as, their, as their Emmanuel, as their God, Lord, I pray right now your spirit would move in them and they'd be receiving you. And Lord, for those of us who have received you as our Savior, as our peace, as our foundation, Lord, cause us to walk in your peace and in your presence. Lord, we repent of looking for our peace in other things, in ourselves, in our circumstances. Lord, you are our shepherd. You go before us. Lord, let us see that. And give us, Lord, that resolve that every time we're troubled, every time we're not at peace, Lord, we would immediately run to you because you're our prince of peace. You're our foundation. Lord, many of us need to hear that reminder today. We thank for that promise. And we pray these things in Jesus' name, our Prince of Peace. Amen.
Well, it is the first Sunday in, of the month, and therefore we observe the Lord's Supper. And it is very appropriate, well, it's always appropriate to observe the Lord's Supper. We're a church. <laughs> but today it really reminds us, right, about our foundation of peace. It's not in ourselves, it's in Jesus. That when we take the bread and cup, what are we doing? We're reminding ourselves that although I was at odds with God, although I deserve God's violence, I'm at peace with God because of Christ's broken body and his shed blood. And so the Apostle Paul, writing to the church in Corinth, he says this, he says, For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the night that Jesus, when he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body broken for you. Take this in remembrance of me. So we take the bread and we remember Christ's broken body. Take the bread and eat in remembrance of him. And then the Apostle Paul continues, in the same way, also, Jesus took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me, for as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Lord, we take this cup in remembrance of your shed blood and your forgiveness of sins so that we are at peace with God. Take and drink in remembrance of him. Lord Jesus, we've taken the bread and the cup, and we do remember and proclaim in the taking that you are our foundation of peace. Lord, you are the gift. And you gave yourself when you gave yourself on the cross. We thank you for making peace with us, even though we didn't deserve it. And Lord, as we go, we, may we be ambassadors of your peace. And Lord, we thank you so much for the gift of yourself on this Christmas. And we want to sing about it. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Just stand if you're able.
Jesus um, said to his disciples in John 14, 27, My peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives you, but as I give you. And so, Lord, as we go this from this place, we pray, let there be peace on earth. But it would begin with us, that we would be ambassadors of your peace, because we have received the gift of peace in the Christ child. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Go in peace.